country and we the people on UST Party Radio. Welcome to UST Party Radio. God, country, and we the people. With Bill Gruber and Cass Taylor. You know, I know that... Uh you join me in being frustrated about the uh, term separation of church and state, Boy, right? Boy, indeed. Well, let's get to the bottom of it, what you say. Yeah, you know, a lot of people, when we talk about uh, the government and things like that and religion, you know, we talk about religion a lot because we're Christians and we enter, try to weave that into the conversation, but they're always saying, oh, yeah, well, how about the separation of church and state? How about the separation of church and state? I'm sick of that conversation. So we thought we would bring somebody on who is the big brain about the separation of church and state and have him explain it so even we can understand it. Bill, good to have you. Bill Federer, the uh, head of AmeriSearch and uh, the American Minute throughout the United States. Good to have you, Bill. Hey, great to be with you. We're going to do a little musical intro for you, and then we're going to ask a few really dumb questions about church and state. Really, really stupid questions. Are you serious? Are you serious? Oh, settle down, Nancy. Settle down. Really, really stupid questions. Really, really stupid questions. Uh, Well, the uh, left wingers will look at you askant when you ask when you say that church and state, the separation of church and state, really doesn't mean what they think it means. Bill Federer knows this very well. He spent a lot of time studying on this, and he can tell us a lot about uh, the separation of church and state. Bill, good to have you. And, you know, why, why don't you start out by giving a kind of a broad brushstroke, and then we're going to drill down to the specifics. Well, it's the exact opposite of what the founders intended. Jefferson wanted to put handcuffs on the federal government, and the 14th Amendment is turned uh, by these activist judges, and they are now putting handcuffs on the churches and the people and the school teachers and so forth. It's just basically the complete opposite of what the founders intended. Jefferson uh, had... Uh, written lots he wrote the declaration of independence which mentions god four times you go to the uh, jefferson uh, memorial in washington dc there's five quotes for the five mention god uh so jefferson did believe in god As a matter of fact um jefferson said almighty god created the mind free all attempts to influence it by temporal punishments are a departure from the plan of the holy author of our religion who being Lord of body and mind, yet chose not to propagate it by coercion, as was in his almighty power to do, but to uh, extend it by influence on reason alone. So here's Jefferson. He did believe in God. He did believe in a creator. So irony of ironies, we have judges today that can use Jefferson's phrase, separation of church and state, to outlaw God, to outlaw the teaching of a creator in school, when Jefferson himself believed in a creator. I mean, they're so brilliant, they can use Jefferson's words to deny what Jefferson believed. But nevertheless, here's Jefferson. Uh, He's friends with John Leland, who is a Baptist pastor in Virginia. John Leland endorsed him and also endorsed James Madison. John Leland was invited to speak in the U.S. Capitol, and uh, Jefferson was in attendance. They had church service in the U.S. Capitol from 1800 all the way up until uh, 1868. And uh, so there... In the Capitol, uh, John Leland teaches on separation of church and state, that the, the rights of conscience are inalienable. Listen to one of Leland's uh, quotes. He goes, Every man must give an account of himself to God, and therefore every man ought to be at liberty to serve God in a way that he can best reconcile to his conscience. If government can answer for individuals at the day of judgment, let men be controlled by the government in religious matters. Otherwise, let men be free. So Jefferson is influenced by John Leland. A bunch of Baptists go to Connecticut. As a matter of fact, John Leland goes to Connecticut, and they're wanting to bring the Baptist faith into this congregational colony. And uh, the state was congregational. In other words, you could not hold office in Connecticut unless you were a congregationalist. And um, they write a letter to Jefferson. And this is what their letter says, 1801, October 7, Sir... Religion is at all times a matter between God and individuals. No man ought to suffer in name, person, or effects on account of his religious opinions. But, sir, what religious privileges we enjoy in Connecticut, we enjoy as favors granted and not as inalienable rights. And they continue writing to Jefferson. Sir, we are sensible that the President of the United States is not the national legislator and cannot destroy the laws of each state, but our hopes are strong that the sentiments of our beloved president, like the radiant beams of the sun, will shine and prevail through all these states. 
May the Lord preserve you safe from every evil and bring you at last to his heavenly kingdom through Jesus Christ, our glorious mediator. So Jefferson writes back to the Danbury Baptist, January 1st, 1802. Gentlemen, believing with you that religion is a matter which lies solely between man and his God, that he owes account to none other for his faith or faith or worship, that the legislative powers of government reach to actions only and not to opinions. Jefferson continues, I contemplate with solemn reverence the act of the whole American people which declare that their legislature should, quote, make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, thus building a wall of separation between church and state. That is where the phrase came from right there. Jefferson's attitude was the federal government should not send IRS agents into the church to tell the church what they should believe, what they can preach on, and so forth. A, a couple of seconds left in this segment, and we're going to come back with uh, Bill Federer, who is the president of AmeriSearch, Kaz, and uh, talk a little bit more about it. And Up next, we're going to have uh, Bill back, and we're going to talk some more about separation of church and state and the misnomer that follows us here on WSRadio.com, the worldwide leader in Internet talk.